Greetings, everybody. Get your King James Bible. Go to Isaiah chapter 44. This is the continuation of the Isaiah series. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Verse 1. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel whom I have chosen. Now, a little note here. Where in the Bible does it say that God now wants the whole world? In the book of Revelation, in chapters 20, 21, and 22, there's only 12 gates to the New Jerusalem, one gate for each tribe of Israel. There is no 13th Gentile gate, so to speak. doesn't exist. So where is this multicultural God loves everybody thing? I can't find it in Scripture. God chose a people, and that particular people, they built the churches, they are the ones that carried and printed the Bibles and tried to evangelize their part of the world and other parts of the world, but they failed miserably. You know, people have gone to China and India and South America, sub Sahara Africa. And yes, I know, as long as you bring bags of rice and beans and feed everybody on a Sunday and you can have a full church, everybody's doing exactly what you, you ask them to do, but leave for a year after you've evangelized them and no longer send food. And when you come back, you'll find that the church has been dismantled and they've used it to build their houses I've heard the story probably a hundred times from evangelists. They leave for a year and they come back and it's nothing. It's just, you know, let's face it. The Bible is, well, you go to India. They have a book called the Vedas. The Jews, they have their Babylonian Talmud and the Kabbalah. The Arabs, they have their Quran. Buddhists have their Tripika. Uh, what books do the blacks have? Well, they're claiming that, uh, well, black Hebrews are claiming that uh, the Bible's their book, but they never knew that until probably the last, I don't know, few, several years. So, thing is, you got to have a written language and know how to read and write before you can have a book. And if you do have a book, you're tied down to it, and you can't change it when, whenever it's convenient. So, no, the Caucasians, the Bible's been their book. Let's face it. Martin Luther Gutenberg invented the printing press. What did he print? Bibles. Let's face it, that's the Bible's our book. All right, Isaiah 44, verse 2. Thus saith the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, just you run, whom I have chosen. You know, I was even in Miami one time, and I was talking to a black man, and he even told me, he says, you know, Christianity, that's a white man's religion. And truer words were never said. So, verse 3, Isaiah 44, verse 3. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed... 
and my blessing upon thine offspring. Ha, huh. poor spirit upon his the seed. Where do we read about that? And blessing upon thine offspring. Where do we find that in scripture? Well, how about the book of Joel, chapter 2 and verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. I guess I'm going to be having dreams. And your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. Acts 2.18 and all my servants and all my handmaids I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Uh, you could read Acts 2.17 where it just quotes basically the book of Joel. Proverbs 1.23, Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you, and I will make known my words unto you. Zechariah 12.10 And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. Romans 8.16, the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Isaiah 44, verse 4. And they shall spring up as among the grass, as willows by the water courses. One shall say, I am the Lord's, and another shall call himself by the name of Jacob, and another shall subscribe with his hand unto the Lord and surname himself by the name of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. And of course, in Revelation twenty-two thirteen, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. All right, Isaiah 44, verse 7. And who as I shall call and shall declare it, and set it in order for me, since I appointed the ancient people and the things that are coming and shall come, let them show unto them. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from that time and have declared it? Ye are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. They that make a graven image are all of them vanity. All right, so in verse 9, when they say, They that make a graven image are all of them vanity. What's vanity? Worthless. And their delectable things shall not profit. And they that their own witnesses, they shall not, nor know, that they may be ashamed. Who hath formed a god, or molten a graven image that is profitable for nothing? Behold, all his fellows shall be ashamed, and the workmen, they are of men. Let them all be gathered together, let them stand up, yet they shall fear, and they shall be ashamed together. The smith with the tongs, both worketh in the coals, and fashioneth it with hammers, and worketh it with the strength of his arms. Yea, he is hungry, and his strength faileth. He drinketh no water, and is faint. The carpenter stretcheth out his rule. He marketh it out with a line. He fitteth it with planes. He marketh it out with the compass, and maketh it after the figure of a man, according to the beauty of a man, that it may that it may remain in the house. He heweth him down cedars, and taketh the cypress and the oak, which he strengtheneth 
for himself among the trees of the forest, he planteth an ash, and the rain doth nourish it. Then shall it be for a man to burn, for he will take thereof, and warm himself, yea, he kindleth it, and baketh bread, yea, he maketh a god, and worshipeth it, he maketh it a graven image, and falleth down thereto. He, durn, he, burn, he burneth part thereof in the fire, with part thereof he eateth flesh. He roasteth roast, and is satisfied, yea, he warmeth himself, and saith, Aha, I am warm, I have seen the fire. Yeah, it doesn't do much good to, if you got a God that you can burn, huh? Verse 17, And the residue thereof he maketh a God, even his graven image. He falleth down unto it, and worshipeth it, and prayeth unto it, and saith, Deliver me, for thou art my God. They have not known, nor understood, for he hath shut their eyes that they cannot see, and their hearts that they cannot understand. And none considereth in his heart, neither is there knowledge, nor understanding to say, I have burned part of it in the fire, yea, also I have baked bread upon the coals thereof. I have roasted flesh, and eateth, eaten it. And shall I make the residue thereof an abomination? Shall I fall down to the stalk of a tree? He feedeth on ashes. A deceived heart hath turned him aside, that he cannot deliver his soul, nor say, Is there not a lie in my right hand? Remember these, O Jacob and Israel, for thou art my servant. I have formed thee. Thou art my servant, O Israel. Thou shalt not be forgotten of me. I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions, and as a cloud thy sins. Return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. Sing, O ye heavens, for the Lord hath done it. Shout, ye lower parts of the earth, break forth into singing, ye mountains, O forest, and every tree therein, for the Lord hath redeemed Jacob, and glorified himself in Israel. Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb, I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself, that frustrateth the tokens of the liars, and maketh diviners mad. What's a diviner? Somebody that uses magic. That frustrateth the tokens of the liars, and maketh diviners mad, that turneth wise men backward, and maketh their knowledge foolish. That confirmed the word of his servant, and performed the counsel of his messengers, that saith to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be inhabited, and to the cities of Judah ye shall be built, and I will raise up the decayed pieces thereof, that saith to the deep, Be dry, and I will dry up thy rivers, that saith of Cyrus, He is my shepherd. Now Cyrus was one of the Persian kings that allowed Judah to return to Jerusalem and to rebuild it and the temple. Uh, you can read about this in the last chapter or two of the book of Daniel, and you can read about this in Ezra and in the book of Nehemiah, book of Ezra and Nehemiah. Um, I think Ezra was the priest and Nehemiah was the king, if I remember correctly, but they were the rulers, spiritual and civil rulers of Israel at that time. But Cyrus allowed Israel, well, Judah, to return. So, verse 28, That saith of Cyrus, He is my shepherd, and shall perform all my pleasure, even saying to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be built, and to the temple thy foundation shall be laid. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.